I'm Parson Michael Maui, and this is Dharma Talks from Sacred Ground. Reflections and meditations brought to you from the Sacred Ground Community Church and Sangha. Today's Dharma Talk was originally shared on December 19th, 2021. It's solstice soon, Tuesday. Uh, let me just check my little note here. Tuesday at 10.58 a.m. I think that's Eastern Standard Time, if you have an interest. But solstice is coming up. And Christmas. As they always do. United. And some people theorize that with solstice, we'll have the most darkness here, and the days will start getting longer again. And that solstice is kind of growing out of fear and this, this, this hope for light again. And that may have been an element, or may be an element, of some people's celebration of solstice. But... I'd like to offer something else. I'd like to invite us into reflecting on darkness as something worthy of celebrating. When I was an elementary school teacher and and when we teach um, we might tell children, yeah, well, the, the plants, they need the sun to help them grow. But what we might fail to mention is that most seeds are going to germinate and begin to grow in the darkness. The darkness is needed. It's part of what allows for things to happen. Just last night, quite late actually, um, I was writing my mom. She's coming back down for an extended visit and uh, she's in her early 90s. And she was sitting in the back seat and I was driving the van and her seatbelt was uncomfortable and so she unbuckled it. And then she was having trouble turning around to buckle it again. So I said, well, I'll just pull off at the next exit. And, you know, we'll rebuckle it. And that's what we did. And why did I do that? Well, you know, when I was a kid, people didn't always wear seatbelts. But no, we pretty much do. We want to be safe, right? We, it's just uh, something we can do to be safe. And I thought it was lovely then in today's reading to hear Thich Nhat Hanh speaking of us flying on this incredible planet going a hundred thousand kilometers an hour and he said you better have your seat belt and what is that seat belt but mindfulness and if we unbuckle our mindfulness we might want to pull off at the next available exit and bring back our mindfulness and I'll tell you when I when I drive you know, three hours from Columbus to Youngstown or Struthers. I wear the seatbelt the whole way, the the auto or the van seatbelt. I don't know that I have had a three-hour period in my life where I've worn my mindfulness so well. And what happens when we bring that presence? There's a lot of people who want to push aside darkness, who want to push aside winter, push aside the cold. And then we have Thich Nhat Hanh saying, he turns on the tap and it's cold in the bathroom and he puts this cold water on, up on his eyes. How many of us, when we turn on the faucet and cold water comes out on a cold morning, are celebrating 
<laughs> He's celebrating the connection to, to the water which has come from some other part of the earth, maybe from the darkness deep under the ground, maybe from the mountains. He's celebrating because, as he said, he's not thinking. He's being. I heard a fellow a, a day or two ago on the radio, and he said something. I hadn't heard this before. He said, you think it's tough to learn a language. Try to unlearn a language. Could you imagine trying to unlearn English? Well, we don't want to unlearn English, but we may want to unlearn some of the language that we've been speaking to ourselves. Language about impossibilities for change. Language about we're stuck in these times of anger and tension. Language that says we can't move toward a different relationship with our Mother Earth. Christmas is an invitation for the God seed to grow in us. Winter is an invitation for fallow time. You know, a farmer will sometimes leave a field fallow, not use it at all, and just let the ground settle. It doesn't have to be accomplishing something, or at least not visibly. And can we allow for some winter times within ourselves where maybe we're not quite as productive, at least on the outside, but we allow for things to grow within? Most of us in any romantic relationship we've been in, if we think back to a first kiss, whether it was when we were a teenager or a first kiss with our current loved one or some other loved one of the past, most of those first kisses happened at night. The first warm caresses, the first making of love, usually in darkness. We need the darkness. John O'Donoghue says when he was growing up in Connemara, they didn't have electric lighting in the house, and so they had these oil lamps. And so as the sun set, everything moved into shadows. And the borders that separated one thing from another began to melt away. And we think of darkness and, and we think, okay, well, what does this have anything to do with Christmas or Christianity? And, you know, okay, I get the solstice thing, but how are you putting all this together? Well, I'll share a little bit. If we look at the Bible and we go to Luke chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. We think of, or we could go to Matthew chapter 2, verses 9 through 11.
When the wise men had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. It's mid-morning here in Ohio, and if I go outside, I don't. it looks kind of cloudy, but even if it was a clear day, I would see no stars. Yet that does not mean that they are not there. The darkness allows us to see the stars. The darkness creates the space for the shepherds to be visited by the angels. Some of you may know that my favorite psalm is Psalm 148. And a bit of it. Praise praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. The moon, the stars, praising the Lord in the darkness. And even if we go to the very beginning of the Judeo-Christian Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verses, verse 2, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of of the waters. The Judeo Christian tradition is it's a tradition that celebrates the darkness. It's a tradition that recognizes the value of the night sky. And there we're also invited to value the winter, to value the cold, to value our sleep. Because in sleep, sometimes we have those dreams. At night, we sometimes have those insights. And I was thinking, what is insight? Sight within. It would be awful to live in perennial day. With apologies to our friends who live in other parts of the world, I would not want to give up the seasons that allow for cold and darkness. There's something in this that is so deep and so valuable. And it is, as Ollie said, as Thich Nhat Hanh said, it is also part of who we are. We are not just called to be stewards of the earth, though that we are. we are called to remind ourselves that we are the earth. We are children of the earth, just as we are children of the great sacred, children of God. And you might want to put those two in competition with each other, just as you might want to put Buddhism and Christianity, oh, oil and water, they can't be put together, or Mother Earth spirituality and these other traditions, they can't be put together. Allow for some darkness. Allow for the lights to be turned down low, as John O'Donohue said, where everything kind of merges and melts together. And allow new life, new life to grow. 
Each year Christmas, there will be a night, at least one night, when I'll turn off all the lights and I'll just leave a few candle lights or maybe a few Christmas lights around the crash scene. And we have our little manger scene with baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph and shepherds and wise men and animals and straw. We circle round again with hope for new birth, new possibility, new meldings and blendings in the darkness. I think of those crushed pieces made of wood, that straw, all of it earth, all of it sacred. Just like you. You are part of the great sacred. You are part of the earth. Happy solstice. Merry Christmas. May we together Continue on the journey, mindfully moving forward to water what is beneficial, hopeful, healing, and worthy in our communities, in ourselves, and for our planet. Peace, peace to all, and amen. I'm Parson Michael Malley, and you've been listening to Dharma Talks from Sacred Ground.